TI Inspire, Linear Regression Problems. I gave a test recently in my math models class that my students didn't master as well as I thought they should have. Part of the problem this year, I think, is that we're all teachers and students like becoming acquainted with the new TI Inspire calculators, and we are having some growing pains as we are learning to use this powerful yet more complex technology. This is one of the areas that has befuddled a lot of us who are accustomed to the ease of use of the TI-83 and 84 series calculators. The main purpose of this lesson is to show how performing regressions on a TI Inspire calculator can be very easy as well. This is the first problem we'll look at. The data in the table below were collected by measuring foot length and height of some of the members of the softball team. Then there is the table. Then the question based on this data, if a softball player's height is 149 centimeters, what would be her approximate foot length? The first thing I do is turn on the calculator and this is what I get, my home screen. Move the nav pad one click to the right to New Document. Press Enter. We can press the center of the nav pad as well as instead of Enter. It asks if we want to save the unsaved document. I usually arrow once to the right to No. Press Enter. Arrow down to 4 and Enter or just press 4 to choose Add Lists and Spreadsheets. And this is what we get, a spreadsheet. Arrow up to the top cell of column A. Here we can enter the word length as title, or maybe just L for length. Use the little green letter keys on the keypad. And then in cells A1 through A5, we put in the data for foot length. Next, we can enter H for height at the top of column B with all the numbers underneath it in order. Next, we press the home key to get to the main menu. We arrow four times to the right to get the fifth icon, the bar graph icon, data and statistics. Press enter. We see the points on the view screen in no clear pattern. Press the tab key at the upper left. We see the H and the L to choose from here on the independent variable axis. Now normally we would pick length as the quantity here to make the height the dependent quantity, but since we're trying to find the length given a height of 149 centimeters, we'll press enter to choose height on the independent variable axis. Press enter. This is what we get, the points all coming to the bottom and H being our independent quantity. Press tab again at the upper left. Arrow down once to choose L on the vertical axis. Press enter. We observe a nice linear pattern of points. Now since we see it seems to be linear or very close to linear relationship, we start to go to a linear regression by pressing the menu key at the upper right. We arrow down to option 4, analyze. Press enter. We could have saved a keystroke by pressing 4 instead. We see option 6, regression. Let's save a keystroke this time by pressing 6. We have a list of types of regressions we can use. The one we want is the one at the top, the one that's already highlighted, the linear regression in MX plus B form. Press enter. We have a nice regression line fitting the points very well. We have different ways we can go from here because we have an equation and a graph. Let's trace this line out to find our answer. Press the menu key. We see our window zoom option here at number 5. Press 5 for window zoom. We see window settings option 1 highlighted. Press enter. We see the window settings dialog box. We have to change our settings to cover the possible answer choices. We have to include a height of at least 149 centimeters. So we press the tab key once so that X max is now highlighted as shown here. Now we'll enter 150 as X max. Next we tab down twice to get Y max so it's highlighted. We have to change this to accommodate at least our largest possible answer choice which is D 22.1 centimeters. So we enter 23 here for 23 centimeters. Press enter. Now we see a much larger window with all the points clumped together in the lower left corner. Now we press menu. We see analyze at option 4. Press 4. Now we see option A at the bottom, graph trace. Press the little green A key. The crosshairs are here near the center of the view screen with the coordinates. We're going to want to go to the right to get to 149 centimeters, so we click to the right with the nav pad. And here we are pretty close to 149 centimeters. And that's 149.006, 20.86. And what we really pay attention to is this dependent quantity coordinate 20.86. 
We look at our answer choices and see that this number, 20.86, best matches the 20.9 centimeters here, and we pick C as our correct answer. Now while we made quite a few adjustments to obtain our answer, I hope you can see that the larger view screen and other features help us to see and understand our answer better. Here's our next problem. I think it's an easier one. The table shows the average price for one gallon of regular gasoline every week from July 27, 2005 to September 5, 2005. Then it has the table relating time and gasoline prices. Then the question, which regression model best describes this relationship? Stop the video and see if you can do this one. Hint, open a list and spreadsheet page and enter the data into two columns first. Then re go ahead and solve it, then restart the video to see if you got it right. Okay, now I opened up another page, a list and spreadsheet page again. I left the earlier work on the file and this is page 1.3 here on the tab above. Next I entered all the data from the table with weeks at the top of one column and price at the top of the other column. You can't see the points below week 4 but they're all entered in, all 11 points. Next we open up another data and statistics page. This is page 1.4 and this is what we first see points all over the place. Then press the tab button. This is what we see. We see the weeks here at the bottom. Go down to weeks and press enter. We see all the weeks lined out 0 through 10 on the independent variable axis. Press tab again. We see price here on the left. Go down to price and press enter. We see the scatter plot of the data laid out before us. Now we press menu. We're going to analyze option 4. Go down to analyze and press enter. We see option 6, regression. We can go down to it and press enter or just press 6 and this is what we see. We look at our possible answers and see that they are all in linear form mx plus b which is the same as option 1. Press enter. Here is our line of regression equation. y equals 6.61636x plus 207.427. We see that it best matches the equation in answer D, y equals 6.62x plus 207.43. So we choose the correct answer, D. Here's our last problem on this lesson. Which of the following tables best represents the regression equation y equals 4.04x minus 19.4? Four different table representations are given as multiple choice answers. Stop the video and solve the problem, then restart the video to see a solution. Answer A looks like a negative correlation, so we can eliminate it without testing. Answer B has a y-intercept of 4.04 when we need a y-intercept of negative 19.04, so we can cross it off as well. So I tried the remaining two answer choices. Here are the data from answer D entered in the spreadsheet 1.5. And here's the scatter plot of these data on page 1.6. And here's the linear regression of the data y equals 4.04x minus 19.4, which confirms answer D as the correct choice. I hope you learned something from this lesson. This has been TI Inspired Linear Regression Problems. Thanks for viewing.